Yo, what is up, guys? What is poppin? We are back on Pokemon Showdown for my ITL Week 2 team builder. Uh, we are facing. Oh, well, we were actually facing um, Zamrock like, and his Orlando Rockins. He's like uh, kind of like known figure in the Smogon community, I think. But um, he dropped out after getting tossed in Week 1. So uh, I got a replacement for him, and this replacement will join the league after. After week two, so I needed someone to play for the ITL in week two and my my good friend Matty Brolic, he decided to step in as a coach of his LA Rashi Rams and makes a nice appearance for one week in the ITL. Um, I couldn't convince him to join the league um, for its entirety, but um, he will definitely play this week two match versus me and this should be a high one. Uh, Matty is, in my opinion, one of the top five guys in the format easily. He's, um, Absolute terrific battler. He should like should have probably or like should have made it um, to the finals at least in the NPL last season, but uh, he came up short. But he definitely was like kind of the team to beat besides obviously Gypsy King. But um, yeah, he came up short, but he's still like one of the one of the greatest in the formats in my opinion. Um, I'm really looking forward to this game. Even even if I lose, like even if I totally get shit on <laughs> by his squad, I. I uh, wouldn't mind because Matty is a friend and Matty is like a terrific player, so it should be should be a good one for sure. Mm. Matty like in inherits a team. Obviously, it's not a team that he drafted, so you might say he's in a disadvantage. But uh, obviously, that like that what <laughs> that's what happens if you like a guy drops out, you can't like please anybody. But he will definitely come up with a heat squad. So that's a run to the team. I bro I brought into 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 his squad. So. As you see, he has the Tapu Koko, which is one of his Z-Caps, with Tapu Bulu, Mega Swamp, Pelipper, Holusha, Escavalier, Yuxi, Naheligo, Kingra, Zika Butops, and Lapard. Um, Zamrock obviously drafted this kind of generic rain team that you could potentially like see like that on some combination on the OU ladder. But um, Maddie, like, I don't think he's a big fan of um, of the of rain in general in the format. Um, I've never seen him use it, but um, definitely like it's a it's a solid thing to have to have, like um, nice speed control with your rain up and swifting sweepers potentially. But I don't necessarily expect rain from him because I kind of have stops to his rain sweepers, and like he has other threats that really could shit on me, like the Naheligo, like the Coco, the Bulu, um, even the Pelipper, and obviously Hol Holucha. Um, I always draft teams that I that I getting six out by Holucha, but um, I like I think I almost always beat um, opposing Holucha, so I kinda like kinda can't deal with it I guess, but um definitely like gonna be interested to see what he brings. I like I know he's gonna bring Holucha one hundred percent that's the has to he probably will bring the Coco, I could see that coming. Um I really expect Naheligo because it actually can two KO my entire team bar um A V users. Um I could like I could see Pelipper Swampert or Pelipper Kabutops. Um, there's no way he's bringing Kingra. There's no way he's bringing a Heligo. Could bring the Yuxi. Obviously, it has some merit. Um, Carmine Breast would actually be a pretty annoying set because um, like I have a Hydreigon on my team, but Hydreigon is kind of kind of bad versus the rest of the squad, so I don't really have a solid revenge. And if he gets like, one or two Carmines, Hydreigon can't even beat it. So um, that could be definitely a threat. As Cavalry could. Come for sure, it's a very, very solid breaker with my team with an SD variant. Um, SD rest or rest talk would be pretty interesting. Um, with like Iron Hat or something, I like only have one or two resistances to it, but um, those like are kind of kind of bad versus the majority of his team, even though I'm bringing one of them. But definitely could be like could be a very solid breaker versus me. Mm. Like looking at this team, you might say like. Like I have checks to everything if you know my team, but um, it's definitely a very interesting situation because um, if I like bring fully defensive Venusaur for for something like Bulu, it can just break me with a like with an SD so that it goes to plus two and get some chip earlier on Venusaur. It's like just can't beat Tapu Bulu, so um, I can't go like too too passive on my mons to like deal with this deal with his threats. Like Mega Swampert could be like. A power up punch substitute set to um shit on the stuff like um stuff like Alumomola or some or something. So um if I run that thing too passively I can potentially lose to my <laughs> lose to um threats that otherwise aren't good versus me. 
So um, I spent a lot of time preparing for this, like at least two or three hours um, in one sitting, and obviously a couple more hours earlier when I like just hovered over the match. I had some thoughts about it, and yeah, like definitely, um, definitely a tough build. But I think I came up with a very solid team. Um, even though I'm like not super confident that it is the best team I could bring, but definitely a team that can win me the match. Win me the ma win me the match. So uh, first one I put on the team was Mega Venus. So this was an, an like a no-brainer that I brought you know because looking at this team it can check Tapu Coco like it checks everything basically um, besides like obviously a uh, Specs Pelipper but I outspeed it obviously and I don't know Lucian is Cavalier I'm not the only monster that I can't really check uh, I can't even beat the Nihiligo one versus one if it's like not Specs or anything I can't potentially like, Leech Seed stall that but like obviously it's mostly for Bulu for Coco for uh, as a backup check to Purge as a pivot um, into as Cavalier, as a pivot into Nihiligo and Kingdra potentially and obviously to deal with the Kabutop. Um, I decided to go with a very speedy Mega Venusaur because I don't want to be outsped by Adam and Bulu. Um, if Adam and Bulu outspeeds me, can just knock me out with a plus two Zen Headbutt um, with, if he has like a muscle band or something and then like I get completely shit on. I don't have a re very reliable Revenger for the Tapu Bulu, like I have one but um, if he has screens up or something, he has very reliable screen setters, then um, I don't have a solid revenge for Tapu, Tapu Bulu. And like Venus, this Venusaur set allows me to always go hard into Bulu. And once I Mega Evolved, that's also why I have protected to get the safe Mega off and don't uh, not take unnecessary chip earlier. This allows me to always come in hard into Bulu. If it, even if he goes for a Zen Headbutt um, on the turn I switch in, I guarantee live after rocks and I can revenge with the Sludge Bomb. Um, he will most likely predict me to be a very slow Mega Venusaur because, like, usually you don't run <laughs> close to max speed Venu. Like, um, it really takes away from Mega Venusaur's bulk. But um, it's definitely the set definitely has some merit with my opponent. I contemplate going fully offensive Venusaur to be honest with Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb, Earthquake, and either um, HP Electric or HP Fire, depending on what I expect more to come to Pelipan as Cavalier because um, Mega Venusaur actually can 2 hit KO or, or um, Oko my opponent's entire team with the set besides the Yuxi and the Yuxi that's not specially defensive takes like 40% by Sludge Bomb so after rocks um, if I get a poison I will 2 hit KO that as well so <laughs> that's kind, kind of wild mm. the reason why I decided against it was because I needed a guaranteed 100% of the time switch into Tapu Bulu even though I can like only come in once if he goes for the bandits and then headbutt um, the turn I switch in but that's a, like a big prediction that I don't like I don't think will happen um, especially not early in the game and I can potentially like just get the surprise outspeed and Oko with the sludge bomb. Um, Leech Seed and Protect is here for um, passive recovery Protect also to get the safe mega off as well but Leech Seed like allows me to get um, recovery back that synthesis in rain like doesn't give me reliability so um, I can like potentially spam Leech Seed because Bulu obviously <coughs> can't come in versus um, the Mega Venus one that can like always get my recovery back and shift down my opponent's team. Like he doesn't have reliable recovery on his squad at all. Like he has obviously Roost on Pelipper, Holucha and Coco. But uh, most of the time I don't think they will run that. And like I can break Coco and Pelipper anyway. I can potentially like um, just... Um, Hit Holucha with the sludge bomb to prevent any setup or something. So that's Venusaur here. I really like the spread. I really wanted to go more offensively, but then I would have to go timid because then I have to outspeed the Jolly Bulu and that like that takes away from the power Venusaur has. So I decided to go with the bulky, um, speedy set, and I think that will do quite well. Next up, I have my Tapu Fini. It's um, kind of a necessary bring, even though like it's not really really good with my team but um, I need Defog, I need Haze and I need um, a switch into Kingdra, <laughs> it's as simple as that. Um, I don't really expect Kingdra, Kingdra to come just because Tapu Fini is like this big presence on my team. Um, Maddie probably has, um, has seen a couple of my vids last season from the ITL and probably knows that I'm really fond of Fini and love to bring Fini versus basically every team just so I have the safe Defog and shit like that. But um, it's definitely a mon that he could abuse with stuff like Tapu Bulu that can always come in, doesn't take too much from Moonblast, and can like with lefties and Grass Drain can um, recover up from that. It's a mon that loses to both my opponent's Tapus, so 
but it's a mod that like is kind of needed because of Kingra, uh, because of potentially Carmine Uxie, because of an SDS Cavalier, and because like uh, of a Halucha potentially. I like really, really don't want him to um, set up to like plus two, plus four with anything on his team. So um, I felt like Haze was an absolute necessary bring. I considered going with Taunt, but then again, I felt like if he is something like a um, screen Zooks, he will run enough speed to outspeed my Tapufini 100% of the time. And like Taunt really doesn't give me as much as Haze does. Yes, it can prevent rocks on some on one turn if he's like a slow Ooxy or anything, but that's basically it. Like Taunt doesn't really help me versus anything because the entire shit that can set up will like just go for it before I Taunt and most of the time like getting to plus two or plus one is enough, so Haze definitely would come in more clutch. Um, the speed again is enough for Adam and Bulu, I don't see him running Jolly ever if he brings it, and like, I don't really need too much bulk to take hits. Um, I can't live a spec slugger from the go anyway, so I don't have to invest into death. I am never forward KO'd or something um, by Kingra. Um, I can take two hits from non-specs, Modus Pelipper, um, if like the rocks aren't up, I think. I think it does like Hurricane if he's um, not like a boosting item, but modest does like 45% or something, so I always live the hit. Mm. As Cavalier, if it's not banned, it can't do it, kill me with the investment that I have. Um, Swampert doesn't kill me with an element earthquake, obviously. And I think the defense investment is to take one Z Stone Edge um, from Kabutops from full, or after rocks, I think, or maybe a plus two Stone Edge without, like, <laughs> without him using the Z move. But like it's it's something like that, and the rest I put in special attack just because I want Surf and Moonblast to do enough damage with my opponent, and like just like especially in the rain with um with um Surf, I can do some massive damage to even stuff like a Cavalier if it's not an AV variant, even to Yuxi like it takes a it takes a solid amount of damage, so I can always like get some nice chip um with the majority of the team, and again with the speed investment I have I could get a surprise kill on Bulu, but um that's like it's more risky for him to stay in with Bulu um, versus with Fini because Fini like is more like mm, is run speedy more often than a Venusaur, so that's probably that probably wouldn't be like really surprised uh, if I outspeed his type of Bulu with my Fini. Next up, we got the Alamomola here. Um, it's a mon that I like kind of hate to bring because Maddie is like Maddie knows how to abuse passive stuff. Like he's a fantastic player, so. <laughs> what like why would I ever bring that? Um, the reason is I need a guaranteed switch into Mega Swampert and Kabutops, um, and like a backup switch into S Cavalier and chip to chip it down potentially or stuff like that. Um, Alomomola just allows me to always stay in on Swampert. Um, if it's a sub power punch variant, as, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Rocky Helmet will chip it down in combination with a rain boosted waterfall most of the time. Um, in combination with Toxic, if he like. Which is in on the toxic or something. Um, I can always wish up and the turn like Mega Swampert has me in range to Okomi. I already got um got off two Rocky Helmet um two or three Rocky Helmet hits. Um, got off potentially a waterfall in that and that will like already put it in range for a potential ice shot from Memo or something. So it's not like too scary of a mon because my entire team also outspeeds Adam and Swampert and even though I think you should bring Jolly, you might want the extra power on Swampert. In the rain, if you run like a rain sweeping set on high power offense or something, um, the investment here is like just to be um, as physically bulky as I can to take hits from Holucha very well, to take hits from Swampert. I'm never too KO'd by Adam and Swampert after rocks and, and a spike, even I think. Um, but no, no, that, that Cloud Boss uh, with leftovers on there, I figured Rocky Hammond would be more helpful. Um, it's also like Rocky Hammond also could allow me to. Um, switch into Tapu Koko once um, when I predict the user and there's no way he will lock himself into Volkids mindlessly um, with my Mammoth Swine around with my um, Venusaur that can just come in. I really expect like um, user and Coco because also like out of the clade all that um, takes like um, can like absorb the voltage obviously. So I don't really don't really see him um, what's called don't really see him going for voltage hard, uh, hard unless uh, my members one is gone. So I could potentially get some shit with the Rocky Helmet off. But that would definitely be um, pretty risky, pretty ballsy play that I'm probably not willing to make. Uh, I just put the rest to death, obviously to like 
just take some hits from me if some Nihiligo better. Um, in the rain, I actually knock out Nihiligo after rocks with, um, with the waterfall. Um, and I break a Mega Swampert um, substitute 100% of the time in the rain, unless it's like a, an impish Swampert or something. Um, Alomola obviously is also um, kind of a, a backup check to Hawlucha. Um, it never can beat Hawlucha 1 vs 1, and like, um, it can, Hawlucha can set up on me to plus 6, but Rocky Armand allows me to um, to um, get some chip damage off of it in combination. Like Rocky Armand plus Waterfall, if no screens up, and if it's not like a fat Hawlucha, um, Rocky Armand and Waterfall will put it in range for an Adamant. Uh, Mammothorn's Ice Shot, so that's like not too big of a deal, I guess. I can't, I don't think I will get swept by a Lucha unless um, I allow my opponent to get um, screens up of him. Then I could potentially wish protect stall the screens a little at least and then like um, try to like play around it. But screens are definitely a very big threat to my team, especially if it's on like a Slug Wave and a Heligo that um, my Tapu Fini can never defog on basically. And also on a Yuxia can Memento out if he has it. Um, I'm not sure if I expect screens to come. It's it's an option, but um, I like I don't think my team covers it um, covers screens too well. Like I don't really. I I think like I just think Nihiligo has a better purpose with my team than just setting up screens or setting up hazards in general. And Yuxi, mm, I don't actually I don't really see that coming. It's, it definitely is an option, but uh, like. I'm not sure, like, <laughs> you could definitely bring screens plus Hawlucha setup, um, but, yeah, I don't know, I feel like I, I'm kind of, I can't, I can't play around, um, if I, like, play my cards correctly and make, like, some hard plays or something, some hard read, mm. to prevent, um, screens from going up, like, <laughs> um, all the time and, um, not, like, and, like, giving me max turns of screens, obviously, to set up, but, uh, yeah, screens are definitely an option, so. You gotta keep. I gotta keep that in mind. <laughs> I have to try to play around that. So, a little Momola here. Hawlucha needs it to be a plus four to um, Oko me from four um, plus plus two acrobatics. That's like sixty. Kind of bounces off. If I like, I can wish wish protect stall that, but he obviously can always um, always knock me out with the uh, not always knock me out, but can always set up on me to plus four plus six. So, <laughs> gotta gotta be careful around that. Like Hawlucha is just a big threat with my team general. But yeah, that's Alamomola this week. Next up, I got my Bon Metagross here, an AV variant again. Um, I really contemplated a lot what kind of set I wanted. I contemplated like a rock polish set, but I figured I don't have enough move slots to be effective with this set. And the set I came up with is uh, pretty, pretty interesting, I think. So um, the bulk investment in HP and to death allows me to take um, two specs, Nahelego HP fires after rocks. Um, the attack investment allows me to Oko Bulu after rocks if it's uninvested. It allows me to um, Oko Pelipa after rocks unless you. Uh, yeah, so Oko Pelipa after rocks with the Thunder Punch. Um, Meteor Mesh just, just like does a shit ton to most of his team because like Metagross is kind of busted. Um, and Pursuit, Suit Chaos, now Heligo. So I'd always do over 50 with Pursuit unless it's like obviously a, a bulky variant, like a max HP set or something. Uh, in which case it's like. <laughs> not too big of a threat. Um, now, Heligo, like, if it switches out, I can, like, pursue to it, do 50 to 60%, and then, like, revenge kill it with something else. Um, like, getting chip on the Heligo is really huge with my team if it's an offensive variant, and Metagross um, gives me a way of reliably getting that chip one way or the, or the other. If he stays in, I, he, I get chip. If he switches out, I pursue trip him and get some massive damage off with the pursuit. Um, Rock Tomb as the last move is a very interesting. Um, interesting move, but a move that definitely has purpose. It doesn't really hit anything super effectively or anything. Um, obviously, besides the Pelipper, uh, which like doesn't appreciate the Thunder Punch anyway. But Rock Tomb allows me to guarantee outspeed his entire team um, after the drop, unless it's like a unless um, it's one of his Swift Swim sweepers. So if I like come come in with Metagross and something that can't really touch me. Um, for example, or like I scare, or I scare out. Um, I can like fire off a rock tomb and make sure that I guaranteed out speed with anything on my squad on the next turn. Um, like if Pelipper wants to come in on to take a medium mesh or something, if I hit it with a rock tomb, I'm guaranteed to 
till next turn with the Thunder Punch because if it's a Scarf Barium, I, I'm guaranteed outspeed after the drop and like I can just go from there. Like it's it's a mon that I uh, a move that I probably won't click, but um, a move that definitely could help me um, to gain some momentum back to get some speed control and shit like that. Mm. The HP and defense investment, I don't. I think it was like to live one earthquake from Jolly Swampert or something, or um, some stupid shit like that. I'm not not quite sure, but I I lived some hit, <laughs> some hit, so that's cool. Um, the problem with Metagross is it's pursued trap itself by Escavalier. If Bandit Escavalier comes in on Metagross, uh, it basically drops <laughs> on the switch out, which is really really rough. <laughs> um, like there's nothing I can do about it. I have to play around it correctly and go from there. Like it's kind of a nuisance to my team. I could bring Rotom Heat to deal with it, but Rotom Heat just matches up so badly versus Rain. I can't bring it. Like I can't justify bringing it. So um, I gotta gotta be mindful of um, as Cavalier and play around correctly. So yeah, that's Metagross. Uh, pretty interesting spread here, but I hopefully hopefully it will like put in put in some work and at least give me at least uh, will check and pursue my Heligo for me, which would make my life. Much more easy, especially the life of my <laughs> defensive core, <laughs> for sure. So next up, I have the Mamoswine here, a set that I absolutely hate for two reasons. Scarf Mamoswine is ass. Like I hate this set with a passion. I basically never bring it. Um, this time I will bring it, but um, it's the set you usually shouldn't run. Like Scarf Mamo is ass. Like let me tell you that. <laughs> After 200 games of the format and like. 60 or 50 of them using Mamoswine. I can't confirm. Scarf Mamoswine is absolute bullshit. Um, it's not a set. The uh, second reason why I hate this set is Scarf plus Stealth Rock. Um, also, pretty ass. The only thing that would make this set any worse would be if I were Jolly, but I am not. Um, even though Scarf, Adam, and Mamoswine can't outspeed Max the Coco, I'm aware of that. But um, my fastest mon is um, Tornado's Therian. And. I really only expect him to speed creep that or to speed creep a speed creep that um, speed creeps tornado speed. So like he would maybe run one 194 speed on Tapu Koko at level 50. So um, I would outspeed that. If he runs timid max speed or may have max speed, stops him. I can't do anything about that. Uh, we'll probably lose the game to Tapu Koko potentially. But besides that, Mamoswine offers or gives me a very reliable um, revenge killer to um, Coco and Bulu uh, with its combination of the dual stab. It can 2 it KO offensive Pelipper with Ice Factor Crash, so if that wants to, wants to switch in, um, it's not really really an option. Um, Ice Shot is like just pretty much needed for her Lucha. Um, I just like have to put it in range, like to, I have to get get it to like 60%, 55%, much rather um, to um, what's called to guarantee kill with the Ice Shot. Um, if he's like a Botia variant, I really need it to be at 50, 55 to kill. But if he's like at 60 um, or 65, the roll would still be in my favor, I think. Uninvested Kalucha takes up to 73% um, from an ice shot from Mammal, which is wild. Um, unless he obviously is like uh, an electric seed or a grassy seed set, in which case I need it to be at like 40 to knock it out, which is really tough to do, so I have to have to be mindful of that. So. <laughs> Um, as you see, like I'm really struggling with my, um, I'm really struggling with my matchup versus Halucha, but you gotta, you gotta be, you gotta play around it correctly and not like allow it to go absolutely wild. And I figured like Scarf, Memo with the eye shots, um, Rocky Hermit, Alo, and everything that basically can stay in front of it would just attack it, um, would just give me, give me like a solid shot, solid shot at. Um, Solid shot at like checking Holucha kinda and putting it the range from uh, of my Mammoth's ice shot. So yeah, Memo Swine if it doesn't bring Ryan really really cool revenge killer, really cool potential um late game sweeper because Ice Ice Red Crash um actually hits a lot of his team for some solid damage. Same with the earthquake. I can just like gotta get rid of his seventeen ground immunities that resist, but yeah, you never know, you never know. So <laughs> next up we got my boy Tony Sparian. Um Choice specs this week, um, full on power, um, enough speed for my Heligor, I don't need anything else. Um, Hurricane, Sludgewave, HP Ground and U-Turn, um, enough speed for my Heligor would be dumb if I, had, if I didn't have the HP Ground, obviously, and it 
After Roxas is a very solid role in my favor to knock up my Heligo. Um, it's not like Bulky variant or Sugarberry variant or something like that. All of which um, I'd much rather see than um, what's it called? Damn, um, Life Orb of Choice Specs in Heligo, which absolutely shits on me. So, yeah. The set is kind of mandatory. Hurricane really hits everything. It does 50 to Coco. Uh, with his native, it does even more. Like after Roxas is 2 KO, 100% of the time, he's like. Um, the, the spread that I think he is, like enough speed for Taunty and then like some bulk, <laughs> bulk on there. Um, or maybe no bulk because it could run mixed like with the Z Brave but for Venus. Um, with Venus so action lives and that's another reason why I protect on there. <laughs> to scout for that potentially, which is cool. Um, yeah, it like does 50% to Swamp, but it Oko's Bulu at 2 Tails, Pelipper, even Max Bedev can't take 2 um, Spec Hurricane. Um, it does like up to 70 or 80 to. Um, Non AV as Cavalier, like Max HP as Cavalier, it's like it's blown back. Um, it does like it also so Lucha obviously does like 48 to Spadef Uxie, 2 Chaos, like Bizdev Uxie, I think, which is crazy because Uxie is stupidly fat. Um, Kingra can't take Hurricane, Kabutops, like Kabutops resists, but Hurricane actually does a fuck ton. And Hidden Power Ground actually occurs Kabutops up the rock if he's uninvested in. In um in both, so oh, that's kind of wild. Um, yeah. So Taunty, like I really contemplated a lot of sets. I wasn't quite sure what to do with it, but I figured like full on, full on offensive with the choice specs could could be kind of cool. Um, definitely like definitely played around a lot with my last one. I contemplated Rod and Heat on here just for the as Cavalier as a backup check to Lucha. Uh, maybe with a protect set to force him to go for a high jump kick and crash himself and shit like that, but. Yeah, like it's, I just can't justify bringing bringing roads and heat. So that's the squad this week for Matty Brolic. Um, a squad that, like as I said, I think can put in the work with my my opponent's team. It's like I put a lot of thought into it. But depending on his team, like if he goes hyper offense, I probably will struggle versus it. If he um does some really crazy crazy things with his Coco or Bulu or something, um, if he brings like specs and I had to go, I I could always be in trouble. So. Um, definitely gotta gotta be mindful when I play. I'm gotta gotta be careful um, around his threats and then go from there. So that's the squad. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the team builder. Let me know in the comments what you think of the team and what you may have changed if it were up to you or something. Um, definitely enjoy if you give some feedback. Yeah, so inside, I really enjoy uploading at the moment and I really want to like I really like reading comments and to like see other people's perspective of what I do. So. Um, thank you guys for watching, drop a like and a subscribe if you did enjoy and catch you in the battle. Um, this team I think will have to go up on Sunday and the battle um, I probably like we probably, probably play today um, on Saturday and the battle then will go up at some point next week when um, like I will talk to Maddie if he like wants to um, upload as well. We like I probably will upload at the same time as he does so that you can enjoy both sides at the same time. So catch you in the battle and see ya guys.